Hi guys, uh, Sol Stuart here from uh, Solitech, just running through uh, a little uh, video on uh, how to create a feature out of an image, something like a logo. So what I'm going to do, I've got a simple block here, it's got some material and I want to uh, put a uh, logo cutout onto the surface. So I'm going to start by putting a sketch on the surface and I'll just go at right angles normal to that. I want to insert a sketch picture, you'll, you'll uh, find this under your tools and under sketch tools as well. Okay, so there's my little sketch picture there. And what I want to do is I'm just going to use the Solid Tech logo as an illustration. So when I bring that in, you can see here's the image, and that can be all different types of image. It's a little bit big. We can scale it on the side here, so I could make it 100. Oh, a little bit small, so let's just make that a bit bigger. 150, that looks about right. And you'll notice that we've also got the option of positioning that with some dimensions if you want to control exactly where it is. I'm just going to drop it on there. Now while we're working with that, I can change transparency on this image so that I can get rid of some of the colors if I want to. So I'm going to use a user defined option and use the little eyedropper and grab the white color. I'm going to match the tolerance a little bit, move that slider up to the other side and same with transparency, you'll see a lot of the white has disappeared. So I'm pretty happy with the way that image looks. Now there is another thing that you can do with that and under your add-ins there's an option that's called auto trace. If you turn that on, what it does is when you're working with that image, you get this little green next button, sorry, blue next button. Click on that and you're able to go and change some of the settings on that image. We can change the brightness of the image. We can change the contrast on the image. We can then even use something like a little um, eyedropper to pick a color like this red and we'll try and trace around that, that item. Now that's done a reasonable job. If you adjust the settings you've got for your color tolerance and your recognition tolerance, you can get um, some better results with that. Let's just try, say, the, the black of the, the S, and you'll see it's starting to match that. Now, I don't think that that's a great match, personally, so I think I can probably do a better um, job with that, because this image is pretty coarse, to be fair. Okay, so rather than do that, I'm just going to cancel out of that and say, no, I don't want to do that, I'll just leave the image as it is. Now, when working with an image, what we're normally going to do, if that auto trace doesn't work that well, is, is start to sketch on top of it. So I'm going to sketch a line to uh, try and do the red portion of this. So I'm just doing a line to start with. Then I'm going to use a spline to get the next uh, curve. So I want to go from that point over to what I see as the tip. So somewhere around about here. And I want another spline. Uh, actually, that will do just for the, for the um, one. Let's just go back there a second. I'm going to do that again. So I just want to go from this point um, over the, the end tip and that's fine. I uh, just want the one, uh, a two point spline there and I'm also going to put a two point spline from this one to this one. Now you might look at that and say well those splines are not much good but the advantage of using a spline is you've got these little arrows that when you click on the spline you can drag this little arrow and you can manipulate the shape of that by just dragging these arrows around. So fairly easily you'll see I can start to match the curves and the tolerance on, on that thing so that it matches pretty well. Do the same on the other one. I'm going to just go grab these arrows and just drag them around a bit to try and match up my shape. Okay, drag that one so it's a little bit closer. And somewhere in there we'll get an, uh, a shape that's kind of matching our image reasonably well. We could play with it for ages. Okay. Now that's fine if you've got some, some curves like that, but what if it's about, what if it's some letters? Well we could use simple geometry, like we could use a corner rectangle for this eye. Okay, so there's a little corner rectangle in there, and maybe we could use an ellipse for the shape of the of the dot that's on top of the eye. So just sort of drag an ellipse over there to reset that. So I'll drag out to the side, and I'll just drag that down a bit so it's a little bit more elliptical. It might be something like this L, which takes a few more lines. So we might just <laughs> start at one point. I'm just going to go from there um, up to the top of this thing, across the side, down here. Now when I get to the bottom, I'd like a curve, so I'll just go back to the start point of that line, and we can just do a curve with our auto transition and I'm just going to go up and close that off with some more lines. So there's my there's my L. It might be the O and if that wasn't elliptical maybe it was uh, um, something like a, a curved slot uh, or a, a straight slot. We can just go in there and say well I, there's the center of my slot and then I'm just going to drag that out to the extremes of that shape and I also want one that goes in the center as well. It's a little bit longer so that goes from there to there and that's the the center one. So it might be a couple of um, slot items like that we can go to one of those. Let's just drag that one up so it kind of matches a little bit better. So there's my O. So it could be the generation of geometry like that. If I exit out of my sketch, 
Um, I've got some of those letters done. I'm not trying to do the whole thing. You'll see that there's the sketch picture underneath the sketch. And if we right click on that, we can even suppress that. So we're just seeing the letters that we've drawn. And having got that, it just works like any other sketch. So we can start to build a feature out of that. And there's my little cut feature. I'm going to change the color. Let's just make that into a, a darker blue or something so it's a bit easier to see. And you can see there's my little cut going into this. Now at any time, we can go back to that and we can say, well, I need to add some more letters. So I need to see my picture. So I'll unsuppress the picture so that it can be seen. I'll edit my sketch. And there's the geometry back in there. Now it's not fully defined. And you might go, ah, oh, you know, always try and make stuff fully defined so it's stable, true. What we could do is we could drag a box around that geometry. We could anchor the whole lot. We could fix it. But a way that works quite well with this is if we drag a box around that geometry and right, and we can we can just make that into a block. So I'm going to give it an insertion point, although it's not necessary, and we'll go OK. So having made that into a block, you can see that I can easily move that geometry anywhere we like, and it stays all the same size. So we've basically kind of locked it up, and we could position just that corner from somewhere in space, and that would be easy control. But the problem might be that. Uh, we got the scale wrong. So somebody's gone back to the image and they've reset it and said, oh, it should be 100 wide. So now we're, we haven't got the right size. So what do we do about that? Well, what we can do is we can go back to that block. We can right click on it and say, let's edit the block. Okay, I don't need to see that dialog box. And we'll, same way as we did before, I'm going to grab all of that geometry, but this time I'm going to right click and I'll say, I want to scale all those entities. Now we can do that pretty simply, scale it about some sort of point. Okay, I'll scale it about that point. Now, um, I know the ratio was 100 to, to 150, so I can just do that. 100 divided by 150 and go OK, and you'll see it's automatically worked out the scale. And we go OK to that. We can exit the block, and now we can just reposition that back on top of our logo, and I think you'll see that that matches pretty well to the resized logo. We exit out of it, and we've resized our, our geometry and our feature. So there's a few techniques that you could use. Um, I'm sure you can sort of run through that at a, a bit slower pace, just trying to get you the, the main detail in there. So I hope that's helpful in how to use an image, play around with it, and uh, get a feature that you can also play around with for scale. All right, um, hope you have a, a, a good session with that, and uh, we'll talk to you again another time. All the best. Bye.